Hello everyone, welcome to Heart's Happiness Podcast. The place where I, Manpreet, share my journey of healing intergenerational family trauma to help you to understand your story. I share a bunch of tools and tips that will transform your mental health and allow you to find your own heart's happiness. So exciting, right? Each episode will cover one of three areas. One, raising awareness of what this trauma actually is and how it hides in our lives. Two, tools, tips, support, lots of different things that I've used to get better and heal from this trauma. And three, I'll be connecting you with so many specialists and therapists and coaches as guests on my show. So we are going to transform your mental health and empower you to take your healing by the hands and move forward. Hello, welcome to the 100th episode of Heart's Happiness. Can you believe it? I remember two years ago when I was practicing how to create a podcast, I was shitting myself. I recorded my first episode 25,000 times. No word of a lie. Um, Well, maybe not 25,000 times, maybe like 25 times. And I nearly didn't do it. I was really, really scared. But I am so glad I did because it is one of my favorite parts of what I do here at Hearts Happiness. And hearing the stories that you guys tell me about how it's been helping you really do warm my heart. So if these 100 episodes have been helping you, please leave me a review on Apple or wherever you listen, because it helps other people to find the podcast, which I'm trying to reach as many people as I can to end this generational trauma cycle. So I would love it if you could do that. And second of all, if you would like a free Power of No mini course, which is worth £55, then click on the link in the episode notes and complete a survey for me. If that's not your bag and you don't want to do a mini course, I will offer you a 30 minute free one-to-one consultation, which is including eye movement. And that I don't do that. I do not offer that. And it will only be available for this month. So that's August 2022. And that's the same goes for the power of no. So you have to fill in that survey this month and you can get one of those three options. Otherwise, you will not be able to. Okay, so guys, so we are going to be talking about boundaries today. And if you are somebody that struggles with saying no and putting others before yourself and people pleasing and really, really struggling with being in your power and taking care of yourself, you are not alone. This is very, very common. And it is a nervous system response. Okay, so it's called a fawn. So what happens is when you feel you're doing this unconsciously, but when you feel unsafe, you will move very quickly into this people pleasing, taking care of others to feel safe. Okay. The way to stop it is to first become aware and conscious of that behavior. So when you're saying yes, when you mean no, when you are spending all your time um, saying yes to events that you don't want to go to, when you say yes to your mother-in-law, you don't want to, you can, you know, all of these things. And it is so programmed in. I have been working on this for years and I can still F up and say yes when I mean no because I want to be a good girl and I want to be liked and I want to be loved and I don't want to cause trouble and I don't want to upset other people. And it's it happens so easily sometimes when I don't think about it. So it's about taking a pause <laughs> before you actually say yes. But boundaries are a really important thing, okay? And that's something that we can really struggle with when we struggle with people pleasing. And there's two types of boundaries. So we've got the outer boundary, which if you imagine a house, it's like the front door, the windows, the outside walls of the house, and that is protecting you from whatever's going outside of the house, right? And then you've got the inside walls of your house, and that is your inner boundaries. Now, inner boundaries are so important. And I think when people are on a journey of trying to get better with people pleasing, and you could be very early at your stage or later, it doesn't matter. You know, it's a journey for all of us. So hopefully this will give you something no matter where you are at that journey. But inner boundaries are your rules to yourself so that you can take care of yourself, okay? Because sometimes we are doing stuff to ourselves 
that is hurting ourselves or is causing us pain or is not good for us or it does not help us reach our goals. And I'll give you an example, okay? I absolutely love what I do here at Hearts Happiness, working with my clients, creating content. I love it all. I really, really do. And when I started two years ago, it was everything to me because it's been something that I've wanted to do for many, many years and I finally got brave enough to do it. And what had happened is for the last couple of years, it has been my absolute priority. So putting out and helping others, which is a real people pleasing thing, right? Um, just became my, my first priority to the point that sometimes my work slipped into my time, into my time with my husband, into my sleep time, into, you know, getting up early and doing, you know, doing work, not working out, not making myself healthy meals, not um, taking my steps in a day. It would, I would love it so much that I would let, I would do it all the time. And that is where my inner boundary did not sort of got very, very merged because this used to be a a real passion of mine. So during lockdown, I started it as a passion. So it energized me, but now it has become my job that I have to have much stronger inner boundaries, okay? So for me, this is gonna be different for you, okay? So for example, if you are a mum who's really busy taking care of your child's needs and you just do not have the inner boundary to maybe get up 10 minutes earlier to do a little bit of self-care for you or you know the inner boundary not to sit there and eat all the chocolate because you're feeling exhausted and tired and actually doing a meditation but you'll know what your inner boundaries are it's, it could be nutrition it could be exercise it could be you know how you're taking care of your mental health how you're managing your time that kind of thing and I have been so strict because this kind of like I do my self-care I do do the things that I tell you guys that to do I do them but I was doing all those things a bit like a to-do list and actually not you know really like taking the time to relax and to enjoy my life and to have these boundaries from my work because even though I love it so much it's heavy talking about trauma so I really do need to take care of myself so you know I have started working less hours and and having the discipline to stop and I don't always want to stop I want to carry on like I really want to carry on but I, I make myself stop at certain times so I can have a break, so I can meal prep, so I can go for my walk, so I can have my water, so I can do my workout in the morning, all those things that can improve my health because actually my health markers got affected by my overworking. So that overworking became a way, it didn't used to be, but it became a way that I was dealing with my fear, my anxiety, my the uncertainty of having a business. So my internal boundaries had got blurred. So I had to have a reset button and be like, okay, these boundaries that I used to do are not working for me anymore. I need to come up with new ones to protect my time, my energy, my mental health, my emotional well-being, my physical health. And that is something that we do, right? So if you are sitting on your phone at late at night and it's affecting your sleep then you're crossing your internal boundary of taking care of yourself or if you are um you know saying yes all the time then you are not giving yourself at least 10 15 20 minutes to take care of you every single day so be mindful what internal boundaries are you crossing for yourself where are you not giving yourself what you need where are you not putting your own oxygen mask on because we can do it so unconsciously, like it just sneaks up sneaks up on you. And I cannot tell you how much better I feel by setting those internal boundaries and following them. I have a lot more energy. I feel so much better. Um, you know, I'm focused on other goals as well, not just the business, which is so important to me but it's not more important than my health and being here on the planet. You know, like I I want to be healthy, enjoying helping others, okay? So it's really important for you to have a little think about your own internal boundaries. Are you drinking too much? Are you eating too much? Are you not giving yourself healthy food? Are you not giving yourself that time? So really focus on that. And it's almost starting to say, like, like as in there is a manager that lives within you and is like, okay, no more being a parent right now, no more 
being um, the worker. No more doing that. It's time to take care of you. You've got to be that strict with yourself like you would with your child, okay? Inner boundaries do take a little bit of work. And what I would recommend with them is doing a little bit of habit kind of stacking. So, you know, if you are trying to bring in the new inner boundary of doing a daily practice, then almost sort of embedding it with like brushing your teeth. And so when you brush your teeth now, you put your kit on and you go do your workout. Um, And then, you know, what's another way that you can put in something else that will help you? So I set an alarm to make sure I stop doing my work at a certain time that reminds me to go eat, have water and go for my walk. So just little ways that you can think about the inner boundaries that you want to create in your life. But how can you make them simple and easy for your brain to kind of digest, right? So if you your inner boundary is I've got to, you know, take my supplements and sometimes we we don't do these things like okay I'm gonna have that with my breakfast and there might be inner boundaries that you need to work on because there are behaviors that you are doing that hurt you that you know cause you or increase your anxiety or don't make you feel good so really exploring your kind of shadow self and exploring what those habits behaviors could be like Are you drinking too much? Are you eating too much? Are you overworking? Are you being obsessed with perfection? Are you putting others before yourself? You know, really noticing what you're doing that doesn't make you feel good so that you could introduce those inner boundaries around that as well. And with all of this, starting really, really small with the small steps is is it really important and then trying it out for like a week or whatever and then seeing how it feels so for me with that working less hours I you know I tried it a week I journaled on it and I felt so so much better so positive so raring to go each day rather than like what I have been feeling like is just generally always feeling a bit like I'm going to burn out so it's just really powerful and I've given up drinking recently like completely and really recognizing each day in my journal how that's making me feel how that inner boundary of not pouring you know a glass of wine or whatever you know in an evening or whatever it is you know how I'm feeling with the more energy that I get got up and went for a run this morning or however I'm feeling you know just really noticing how creating that inner boundary in your life like what it's giving you because sometimes our brains are like oh we want to hold on to what we do and you know and not having these inner boundaries and not having these rules and our ego wants to be all wild and be like forget it we're just going to do everything but it can just really not feel great you know and so that's what we're trying to recognize because that is what can change you really deeply on the inside so inner boundary so so important and what i've noticed is that those of us that struggle with codependency which is people pleasing um can really struggle with having them so we may not cook ourselves a good meal we may give like cook a beautiful meal for other people but not for ourselves so creating those inner boundaries that keep make us feel well in our mind in our body and in our soul like if i don't go for a walk how how awful i feel afterwards so my inner boundary is set that alarm and to go and do that thing at like whatever time it suits you okay so that is really important um a book that I would recommend to you if you are somebody that struggles with people pleasing is When It's Never About You by Elaine S. Cohen. And I'll pop that in the episode notes. And actually, she has such a great perspective about people pleasing and how we are are basically become enablers in our families when we are rescuing others, when we're putting them first, when we're being like the people pleasers, that actually, you know, we are part of that toxic dysfunction as well. So it's a really great read for you to have a little reflection on where you are within your own family and then starting to focus on having those boundaries with others. So we need boundaries like that outside of the house to protect ourselves from you know to keep us safe obviously but also to manage our time our energy our health our money our um our well-being our safety 
Um, you know, the sex boundaries, there's physical boundaries, there's emotional boundaries. So you need to become aware of that. And I would say your body is such an important thing in this process. Your body will be giving you signals if something or an experience isn't, isn't making you feel good. So dropping from your head into your body and noticing maybe how when somebody is speaking to you, how it's making you feel unsafe. That could be indication that they're crossing an emotional boundary, okay? Um, you're heart racing because you're trying to do so many things for other people. That could be an indication that you're crossing time boundaries, for example, okay? Um, flinching when somebody at work touches your arm or is overly tactile is an indication that a boundary is needed it's just so powerful that when we start to listen to this that we're like oh my god this doesn't feel right for me and it might even seem weird and other people may not understand but the fact is your body is really giving you that indication the next step is for you to communicate with that with other people about those out out of boundaries and it's not like being all like you know, horrible and mean about it is communicating it just with love, you know, so for that overly tactile person at work, oh, um, you know, it just makes me really feel uncomfortable when you touch my arm when we work, so do you mind just not doing that? Could be, you know, we could say that nicer, I don't know if that's the nicest thing, or, oh, it's really nice of you to invite me on Sunday, but I've just got so much on the moment, I will not be able to spare the time, but um, I look forward to spending time with you soon. So scary sometimes when you first start out, but like anything that you do for the first time, it can feel scary. So communicating those kind of needs um, about what your boundaries are can feel just terrifying, especially in relationships that don't feel safe. So one of my recommendations always is to start with the relationships that feel a little bit easier to do that with. Um, And it might feel scary in all situations, But it will just build your confidence for, you know, saying no and for setting that boundary. And, you know, it can help you just over time to sort of build up to maybe the more the people that you feel are more scarier. And this is a real learning curve and a process. And you might really struggle to do it with certain people and just disappear on them or ghost them because it feels too scary. But well done, you're listening to that, that person doesn't feel good to you in your energy system. But maybe, you know, as time goes on, you would be able to communicate um, in a healthier way to that person, you know, if it feels right and at the right time. So just notice where you are at your journey, just making these small little tweaks and these small little changes, you know, and it like it's okay to say no or have a boundary even with your own children like you know mummy works out from six till seven in the morning so if you come down you're just gonna have to like play with your toys but I'll be I'll be working out at that time it's really important to model that to your children as well so they can see what an inner boundary looks like what an outer boundary looks like because that's healthy for them that's this is like the biggest self-love as well that you can be like really checking in with yourself and be like you know what doing that is too much for me right now working on this or you know going to this event I'm gonna say no to that Oh, my mother-in-law really wants me to do that and she'll be really upset with me if I don't. But I'm going to lovingly decline. And then what can happen when you sort of start to say no and start to have those boundaries is you can experience that real discomfort in your body, in your energy system. And that is really calling for you to regulate. Okay, and if it's like really sort of, and you're feeling it quite a lot in the body, you know, moving your body, doing yoga, running, Um, I'm a big believer in EFT, any of these things can really help you to sort of shake that discomfort, that negative emotion, sort of let it out of your body. You might need to journal, you might need to cry, you might need to grieve just because, you, you know, you just absolutely hate saying no. It makes you feel like a terrible person. But, you know, getting into your journal, getting getting into that sort of regulating of emotions, maybe you need to do a little dance, whatever it is, just so that it's like, okay, I've done it. You know, I've made that decision. I've put the boundary in place. 
And it's such a powerful thing when you start to have those kind of boundaries, like I am going to do that, I'm not going to do that, and this is acceptable, this isn't acceptable, and you communicate those things with like love and kindness. It's really very powerful, and it's a way in which we can take our power back. It also helps us to tell other people how to love us, how we need them to be there for us, what is and isn't acceptable. So it makes more authentic relationships because how many times have you said yes when you've meant no and then resented the other person, felt angry with them, felt upset, and then that's had an impact on your relationship, but you never actually told them how you felt and what was or was not acceptable. So by having boundaries, we can have more authentic relationships which is so so much better than having fake ones right if you need a little bit more help around the language of how to say no how to take care of yourself that is what the power of no mini course is all about and as i said if you fill in the survey in august i'm probably not going to do it for the whole month it'll probably just be for the first three weeks of august you will get the power of no for completely for free if you fill in my survey. And that is in the episode notes or reach out to me if you want it. And that's it for this week. And I'll speak to you very soon. And there we have it, guys. An episode completed. I hope you enjoyed it and it raised a load of awareness in your mind. There was alarm bells going. You were all like, ding, that's totally me. Because that's what I was like when I started this journey. And that is the start of the process finding out this information and realizing it has happened in your own life so i really hope it was helpful and before the next episode coming out next wednesday be sure to check us out on instagram so it's hearts underscore underscore happiness also we have a youtube channel where i share the videos i create for instagram on so you can check that out they come on about once a week and then we also have a facebook group if you want to join to carry on the conversation i want to create a community where we're all talking about our very real experiences and traumas and then there is also my website called heartshappiness.co.uk which you can check out to join our mailing list so that as i create new services and support tools for you all you're the first to find out and i have a freebie on there so definitely check that out it's five books that transformed my healing so if you really want to kickstart and you know you're liking the content in here these books are like the basis of so much of my knowledge so definitely check that out and i will speak to you next week i'm so excited to continue this journey with you to help you to find your own heart's happiness take care